And now back to Bobby Likas Car Clinic and your host, Bobby Likas. Good morning, Car Clinic affiliates. Your Car Clinic minutes for the week of April 8, 2019 are about to head your way. Go ahead and press the record button. As always, thank you for broadcasting and listening to Bobby Likas Car Clinic. Have a great weekend. Hi, I'm Bobby Likas with today's Car Clinic Minute. When I say horsepower, what comes to mind? If you think go, you're right. But if you think stop, you're right too. Confused? Don't be. When I come back, I'll tell you all about it. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. If your wiper blades are worn and streaking, stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts and save $8 instantly on a pair of Rain-X Latitude wiper blades. Improve visibility and save money with Rain-X Latitude wiper blades. Plus, take advantage of our free wiper blade installation. O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supply. See store for details. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Horsepower measures muscle, usually thought of in terms of acceleration. But what goes up must come down. Yes, it takes horsepower to stop cars as well. In fact, it takes twice as much energy or horsepower to bring a car to a stop as it does to get the same car up to speed. Now you know why everyday driving, even in cool weather, creates extremely high temperatures within a car's braking system up to 600 degrees. So to make sure your car's horses have the power to whoa as well as to go, have your brakes checked regularly. I'm Bobby Likas. Likas, you'll love us. Hi, I'm Bobby Likas with today's Car Clinic Minute. Brakes are a lot like your conscience. Both let you know when you're on a dangerous path and gone unheeded can cost you big time. When we come back, I'll tell you the warning signs. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. If your wiper blades are worn and streaking, stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts and save $8 instantly on a pair of Rain-X Latitude wiper blades. Improve visibility and save money with Rain-X Latitude wiper blades. Plus, take advantage of our free wiper blade installation. O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supply. See store for details. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. When it comes to your conscience and your brakes, ignorance is not bliss. So heed these signs of brake failure. Your car pulls to one side when stopping. Brake pedal seems lower than normal. Brakes squeal, chatter, fail to release completely, grab with the least amount of pressure, or require excessive pressure. Like life, today's brakes are complex with a lot of parts and computerized anti-lock systems. Your job is to recognize your brake's warning signs, then leave repairs to well-equipped pros. I'm Bobby Likas. Like us, you'll love us. Hi, I'm Bobby Likas with today's Car Clinic Minute. Constant chatter can be annoying coming from a well-meaning friend. But if it's coming from your windshield wipers, chatters more than irritating. It's dangerous. When I come back, I'll tell you why. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. If your wiper blades are worn and streaking, stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts and save $8 instantly on a pair of Rain-X Latitude wiper blades. Improve visibility and save money with Rain-X Latitude wiper blades. Plus, take advantage of our free wiper blade installation. O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supply. See store for details. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Since 90% of driving decisions are based on sight, consider wiper chatter caused by flawed blades or windshield film a warning bell. Here's what to do. Inspect blades for tears. If torn, replace. If intact, clean blades with alcohol. Then straighten wiper arms so that blades and windshield are at a 90 degree angle. Now clean your windshield. 
Road grime can easily be removed using soft scrub or Bonami on a damp sponge. No, these household cleaners won't damage your windshield, so scrub away till rinse water sheets off. I'm Bobby Likas. Like us, you'll love us. with today's Car Clinic Minute. Watering plants is like gassing up your car. Both provide fuel, water for plants to grow, and gas for cars to go. But if a little bit's good, is more better? When we come back, I'll tell you. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. If your wiper blades are worn and streaking, stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts and save $8 instantly on a pair of Rain-X Latitude wiper blades. Improve visibility and save money with Rain-X Latitude wiper blades. Plus, take advantage of our free wiper blade installation. O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supply. See store for details. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Like Goldilocks suggested, just right is best when watering plants and refueling your car. Like flower pots, don't let gas tanks run completely dry before refueling. Because when your car runs out of gas, debris from your tank is sucked into the engine, causing performance problems and potential repairs. But don't overfill either. Excess fuel flows from your gas tank into a reservoir, but then can be drawn into the engine causing flooding. So how much gas is just right? Two clicks of the pump when you're refueling. Remember, two clicks only. I'm Bobby Likas. Like us, you'll love us. Hi, I'm Bobby Likas with another Car Clinic Minute. Put your thinking caps on. Ready? Which of the following tops the list of inventions people could not live without? Telephone, light bulb, or automobile? The answer may surprise you when we come back. If your wiper blades are worn and streaking, stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts and save $8 instantly on a pair of Rain-X Latitude wiper blades. Improve visibility and save money with Rain-X Latitude wiper blades. Plus, take advantage of our free wiper blade installation. O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supply. See store for details. O, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. What's nearest and dearest to our hearts? Sorry, Alexander Bell and Ben Franklin. It's the automobile. According to a poll conducted by the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, the automobile was chosen by 63% of respondents. The light bulb, phone, and TV, in that order, trailed behind our beloved cars. Surprisingly, as much as we depend on our vehicles, we often neglect them. During this season of giving, why not give your car an annual inspection? Then you won't have to live without the invention you can't live without. I'm Bobby Likas. Likas, you'll love us.
Bobby Lycus Car Clinic begins at six minutes after the hour. Bobby Lycus Car Clinic begins at six minutes after the hour. Bobby Lycus Car Clinic begins at six minutes after the hour. Bobby Lycus Car Clinic begins at six minutes after the hour. Bobby Lycus Car Clinic begins at six minutes after the hour. Countdown to three minute mark, five, Four, three, two, one, mark. Bobby Lycus Car Clinic begins at six minutes after the hour. Bobby Lycus Car Clinic begins at six minutes after the hour. Bobby Lycus Car Clinic begins at six minutes after the hour. Countdown to one minute mark. Five, four, three, two, one, mark. Countdown to 30 second mark, 
five, four, three, two, one, march. Count down to 10 second mark. Five, four, three, two, one, mark. Welcome to Bobby Lycus Car Clinic. If you have a car question for Bobby, call now at 1-800-264-5454, toll free from anywhere in America. And now, here's your host, Bobby Likas. And good morning, folks. Welcome to this edition of Bobby Likas Car Clinic. Sit back and ride along with me this hour, and we'll talk cars and uh, tires and oil and batteries and <laughs> windshield washer nozzles. <laughs> well, the reason I say windshield washer nozzles is because you never think about those sort of things, like windshield wipers, until... It rains, and then you turn the wipers on, and they either chatter or they smear, or, or you know. And there's a way that you can repair, or not repair, but you can uh, clean a windshield and also the windshield wipers, and so that I won't have to rush. I, I'll tell you when I come back from the break. But it's very interesting. It's something that you can do at home, and it's not an automotive product that you're going to use to clean your windshield. It's household uh, normal cleaning materials that I'm sure everyone has. Bobby Likas Car Clinic is brought to you today by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Trust the friendly, knowledgeable parts professionals at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Their professionals know what it takes to get the job done right. Their professional technicians have counted on O'Reilly Auto Parts and yours truly as well for years. And you can go see for yourself. O'Reilly Auto Parts, better parts, better prices every day. Okay, Hanno, take your call, 888 227-2546 that's 888-227-2546 and Miss Hannah will put you in the queue and I will take your call and put you on the air when I come back and a little information about how to clean a windshield you'll you'll be surprised using HEST high energy solvent technology Berryman's B12 chem tool dissolves gum varnish and carbon deposits in the fuel system that restores lost power and peak performance but don't take our word for it retired airline pilot Captain Cal knows something about fuel systems and engines after using B12 chem tool in his 76 Thunderbird Cal says the vehicle runs better than new according to Cal it performs like a DC-9 his favorite airplane learn more about Berryman B12 chem tool and other great products at BerrymanProducts.com Motorrad, a longtime OE supplier, is a leader in automotive thermostats, caps, and engine management products. Motorrad's manufacturing facilities feature state-of-the-art equipment with strict quality control and functional testing, ensuring high-quality, long-lasting products. Motorrad delivers world-class product development for its advanced thermal and engine management programs, providing parts, accessories, and kits needed to do the job right the first time, every time. Motorrad provides parts for virtually any vehicle and engine on or off the road. Motorrad, leading the way in coverage and service. A customer dropped off a 99 Ford Ranger for a routine oil change service, and she mentioned that the truck was misfiring on occasion. The road test confirmed a misfire under load, even though there was no check engine light or any other codes to be found. While performing the oil service, we found a coolant level low, sending up an immediate red flag. A quick check of the ignition system revealed the number five cylinder was a missing culprit. We pulled out all six plugs and did a quick compression test. All cylinders were pretty close at 200,000 miles. We then inspected the plugs closely, and the one from number five had traces of coolant on it. Antifreeze will leave a greenish-yellow tint on the electrodes. This engine had a small head gasket leak or a cracked cylinder head. Tear down and inspection was more than the truck was worth, so we suggested K-Seal. We poured in the product, drove the truck, topped off the coolant and installed a fresh set of spark plugs. It's been over a month and the car is doing great. For more information, go to kseal.com. You're listening to Bobby Lycus Car Clinic. If you rise scout fitters, I'm Tina. How can I help you? I'd like to place an order. Great. Which item? The cotton roll neck sweater, large. Okay. Periwinkle loaded or caramel? The caramel, please. 
The what? I like it in caramel. Oh, the caramel? Yeah, that's what I said, Tina. Actually, you said caramel when it's pronounced caramel. Can't we just call it yellow? No. Everyone knows the best part of a Milky Way. They just don't know how to say it. After all, it's our caramel. It's caramel. Ugh, that makes a Milky Way great. You start my morning. You stir in my soul. You warm my heart. Make me feel whole. Your aroma calls me. It starts my morning. Happy morning. Your name is Folgers Mountain. Well, now you're here. Aroma helps me wake. And the day is mine to take. The best part of waking up is Folgers in your cup. And now, back to Bobby Likas Car Clinic and your host, Bobby Likas. Okay, let's get started with this hour of Bobby Likas Car Clinic. And do us all a favor, do us both a favor, or everyone that's listening out there, call earlier than later so that we don't have to rush toward the end of the program. That way we can sort of have an easy day and pace along and, and uh, have our conversations and, and talk about uh, ways. And, and to be clear, I don't know all the answers to your questions, uh, but also, uh, I would have to say, as a caveat to that, uh, we are celebrating our 48th year. In fact, March, uh, which is, you know, just, just passed, we celebrated 48 years in automotive service, 28 year, years here in the studio. And what that means is that there's a lot of experience, and there's uh, I've answered 150,000 car questions on air, and, and I, I do this f with uh, using my experience, uh, no prompts, no screens, no computers, uh, and I share with you the information that I know, and that's why I, a lot of times I'll say I don't, I don't know the answer because, you know, I'm not here to fix your car, but uh, let's do move on, and, uh, and I'll invite you to call at 888-CAR Clinic. That's 888-227-2546. So let's take a call from Steve. He's first in, so he'll be first up. Uh, Steve, you have an 89. Good morning. I guess they got, got your tag number. I'll be fucking fighting you through the mail, fucking piece of shit. Well, obviously, that's a little road rage going on there. Uh, so he's out. Uh, so when you do uh, call, I, I guess the bottom line is that obviously there's some uh, problem there. Uh, so I was telling you about the windshield wiper and how to clean the windshield. So here's how to clean the windshield. Now, understand... Don't use a sponge that has an abrasive on the sponge. Use a regular household sponge that has a uh, soft on both sides. And what you can do is put your car in the driveway, which makes this easier, and take the, the regular hose, uh, remove the, the spray nozzle from the hose. So you want the water to, to come out of the end of the hose, just pouring out of the hose. And you don't need it under pressure uh, because you're going to wet the windshield real well, and you want to make sure that you keep the car wet around the base of the windshield because you're going to use Bon Ami. That's right, Bon Ami. Now, granted, Bon Ami is a uh, it's an abrasive. So you take the abrasive, and you sp you take the sponge and wet it, and then you put the abrasive Bon Ami on the sponge, and you scrub the windshield. And you just, you can, it briskly, you, you, you cannot scratch a windshield with Bon Ami. And, and you can use soft scrub as well. So either one of those two uh, abrasive household products really works. So you, you put that on the sponge, and then you scrub the windshield, and then you run the hose or, uh, over the water, uh, over the windshield. And when the water sheets off of the windshield, not beads up, but when it sheets off the windshield, then the windshield is, is perfectly clean. Now, here's the challenge. You don't want to forget the windshield wipers because if you clean the windshield and you got it all really, really clean down to the root of the glass, then you want to make sure that you clean the wipers as well. So you take isopropyl alcohol. I, I told you this was, you know, household. These are household products. You take isopropyl alcohol and a regular paper towel, not a rag, but a paper towel because the paper has more abrasive. You know, it's wood. It's wood background, so a pulp. So you take the uh, uh, isopropyl alcohol and you stroke the windshield wiper rubber, the blade itself, and you'll see a lot of black that comes off because that's the rubber, and you'll see uh, the film from the old windshield of oil and dirt and, and residue. And by 
performing these two simple tasks, uh, you, you will find that the chatter is gone from your windshield and you will find that the actual blades will not smear when, when, the, when it rains. So that's a, a, an excellent way for you to drive a safer car and uh, for, so you can see where you're going. And speaking of, of safe cars, uh, you want to check your lights, you want to check your oil for a trip, you want to check all the things in your automobile that you can, uh, and of course you can have professionals do this same, uh, perform the same service, but you want to make sure that uh, the uh, car has the fluids that are up to par, the radiators full, uh, you know, at one time you could check the battery level, but uh, for the most part, we, we, we're into the sealed batteries these days. And speaking of batteries, uh, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that I'm, I'm a, a follower, a user, and uh, a, an endorser of the AGM battery. And if you're a regular car clinic listener, you know that Johnson Controls, well, of course Johnson Controls makes the, they, they make more uh, AGM batteries than, than anyone else, and they have some 55 plants uh, we recently had a gentleman on from Johnson Controls, and it was so so interesting. Uh, the, the Battery Shop, which is a YouTube channel, when you get an opportunity, you should take a look at it, and you can learn. And, and even though there's more information there than you might want to know, but there's some tidbits of information that you, you'll be surprised to learn. And even the technicians out there, a separator plate, what does a separator plate do? And how the, the, how the liquid acid battery and a liquid filled acid battery compares to an AGM uh, you know which is the glass mat battery absorbent glass mat that's what AGM stands for and what that means is with an AGM and and, and originally a lot of the high performance uh, car guys uh, selected AGM batteries because we could put those in the trunk or uh, without having to worry about turning over or spilling or what have you and there's no acid and so uh, there, there's electrolyte in there, but it's uh, it's absorbed in the glass mat, so they're not sensitive uh, to how they're mounted, uh, and and so that really works. So for me, I had a, a Viper that I kept for most well, 15 years, and when its battery went bad, which didn't take long, uh, I, I don't I never had figured out what Chrysler used for batteries because the, the Viper battery lasted about 18 months, and a town and country van that I had the battery lasted about 15 months and I replaced those. And uh, at first I did not use the AGM battery on the Viper, but I, but because that battery was located behind the fender well, behind the rear wheel, uh, it was really a, a challenge to get to. So I said, well, I wanna put a battery in there that I don't have to service. I don't have to worry about. So uh, I, I did that and, and uh, thoroughly cleaned the terminals and then used uh, treated wicks, which are little uh, pads that go on the post. And of course, those uh, pads, uh, you, you can find a lot of shops will service your battery and, and remove the corrosion. And if you're doing that yourself, uh, you can use, you know, uh, most almost anything to clean it. Make sure that when you clean a battery, just remember that anything that, uh, if you're in your driveway, and if you're in my shop, guys, if you're gonna clean the battery, make sure that you uh, run tons of water because if you clean the battery in a battery tray, that battery tray has a, a, a drain hole, which all battery trays have drain holes. Uh, and speaking of Chrysler, at one time the, the Chrysler vans put all of their major wiring harnesses, they ran them underneath the battery tray. I mean, it, it didn't really think about it, it was just part of the engine compartment, right? Well, lo and behold, the battery drain hose would get stopped up with debris, and then whatever water would get in there, it would be tainted by the acid from the battery because batteries sweat acid, the, the liquid fill do, and uh, that would damage, seriously damage the wiring harness. And to that end, folks, uh, the early town and countries, Chrysler made the harness originally in one uh, swell swoop. So all of the engine wires and all the major wires on the hood ran into the dash and they were solid. So when I say solid, they, they were there was no bulkhead connector. So you didn't have the inside wires and then uh, a male-female big bulkhead connector uh, that joined the two. They were one and the same, which is a better way to do things because you, anytime you have a connection, you have a possibility for uh, an open circuit or corrosion or what have you. So, so from an engineering standpoint, I can see how that was made. Plus, 
maybe uh, during assembly it was faster for the assembly line to get the, get the cars built. That goes into a lot of uh, consideration when you're making new automobiles or when they're assembling new automobiles, not making them, they assemble. So, so anyway, uh, this battery acid would get on the wires, it caused havoc and it would cause a lot of problems. And uh, when it did, uh, it would uh, destroy the wires. So later on, Chrysler changed and did put a bulkhead connector so that whenever this happened, uh, you, you could just replace the front half, the engine part of the wiring harness versus the whole body wiring harness, which, which was a major. So long story short, if you do clean your battery, uh, you, making soda is fine, uh, dishwashing soap, Dawn, Dawn is a great, not to clean your car, uh, unless you're going to clay bar, that's a whole different detailing and I won't go into that, but, it, but Dawn liquid is a, a great uh, household uh, detergent, uh, so you know, a dishwasher soap that, that you can use to clean an engine and what have you. Just remember, you, you, you can clean an engine. It doesn't hurt to spray water on the engine as long as you don't spray it up into the mouth of the engine. Just remember that and don't spray it on a hot engine. Uh, so you, you clean and flush this battery, the battery tray, until it's all cleaned and then you continue to flush the car around it so that you don't have any residue from the battery that ends up on the driveway because that will turn your driveway uh, uh, red and oxidize the, the cement. So you want to make sure that you, you know, rinse it really, really well. And we're talking about severe cases. I'll come back and take your calls at 888-227-2546. Enhance the performance of your battery with Optima chargers and maintainers. The Digital 400 maximizes battery life and performance with a built-in battery health mode. It also delivers a hybrid LED battery charging gauge with LCD screen and a quick set battery type selection for easy operation. The Digital 1200 improves the performance of all optimal batteries as well as other high performance AGM and flooded batteries. It recovers deeply discharged batteries and helps extend battery life. Learn more at OptimaBatteries.com. Talking tunes? No, not the ones on your radio, the ones that allow you to reprogram your vehicle's factory computer. The result is more power, more torque, and a better overall driving experience. Superchip performance programmers can also be used to help with MPG by increasing the timing of the fuel delivery. With an advanced timing of fuel delivery, you get more complete burn, which basically means more power out of the fuel you already use. Find your perfect tune at superchips.com. That's superchips.com. This car repair spotlight brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts. This week, a 2014 Kia was towed into the shop with 30,000 miles and a no-crank condition. Car Clinic Service technician Jim Casey found a replacement battery already installed, but with serious corrosion and the system not charging. Corrosion was so bad that its battery sensor monitoring module and fuse block attached to the positive terminal had literally crumbled apart. We reached out to our local O'Reilly Auto Parts professional and ordered new parts. Casey then gave this low mileage Kia a thorough digital inspection, pictures included, and determined its front brakes almost worn out. Another call to its owner who had recently bought this car to update our findings, followed by another call to our O'Reilly Auto Parts professional for new pads and rotors. All's well that ends well. Now our Kia starts and stops like new. Another great reason our first call for parts is O'Reilly Auto Parts. O'Reilly Auto Parts, better parts, better prices every day. You're listening to Bobby Lycus Car Clinic. The airlines like to have sales. Summer getaway sales, holiday sales, winter sales. Truth is, at any moment, some airline somewhere is on sale with low fares to great destinations. Travelocity knows exactly what's going on, who's on sale, to where, and when at over 700 airlines worldwide. We even have this nifty feature that lets you look at a calendar so that you can see exactly the days the great fares are available. Travelocity.com. Go virtually anywhere. AOL keyword, travel. Hun, <coughs> guess my temperature. It's 2 a.m. Go to sleep. Come on, one guess. I'm a 98. <coughs> higher. I'm higher at 99. You're getting warmer. <laughs> Wait, I'm getting warmer. Cold symptoms keeping you from getting a good night's sleep? Get NyQuil. The nighttime sniffling, sneezing, coughing, aching, stuffy head fever so you can sleep better to feel better medicine. Use as directed. One more guess. 100. <coughs> yes. <coughs> Tell her what she's won, Bob.
And now, back to Bobby Likas Car Clinic and your host, Bobby Likas. And welcome back to this segment of Bobby Likas Car Clinic. Ride along with me and uh, we'll talk cars. Uh, I'll share with you some uh, really interesting tidbits like how to clean your windshield, which is really kind of cool. And if you live in the northern climates and, and the southern for that state, well, actually, there's two different reasons, uh, main reasons, why you should use the proper windshield washer solvent and, and not water in your wipers. Number one, uh, in the south, with a lot of humidity and, and a lot of the heat under the hood, of course, that's true for any automobile, but more so I'm talking about when you park your car in the garage or on the carport at nighttime, uh, if you use regular water to clean your windshield, number one, it's not going to clean the windshield well. Uh, and uh, also, it will uh, turn to, to sludge and debris, and, and you'll have that grime, and you'll, you'll have that uh, bacteria that grows in, in water. Uh, so you, you don't want to... You don't want to do that, and you can go to any parts store. Uh, I, I would recommend O'Reilly Auto Parts for this, and and I like to use uh, uh, a, a good grade, and they make blue and green and 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 different types of windshield washer solvent. The green is the type that I that I like, and you can buy that at O'Reilly Auto Parts. But you use that, and it really makes a difference. Uh, don't mix your own uh, unless you're using the right. Uh, mixture of water and and uh, and con uh, condensed uh, uh, soap I, I say soap uh, the windshield washer uh, solvent number two uh, in, in the northern climates when it's cold of course you, the windshield washer will freeze unless you've got antifreeze in it and you don't put antifreeze any, anything near antifreeze in your, your now now see jonathan you're laughing you're smiling but folks antifreeze will uh, destroy your paint brake fluid will destroy your paint uh, a lot of times, and, and this has happened, it's happened to yours truly, it only has to happen one time and then you say, oops, I'll never do that again. Have you ever done that and been in a place where you never do that again? Well, any time that you depress the brake pedal and the shoes or the pads wear, uh, specifically with, with regard to uh, disc brakes, uh, when the, there's no adjustment because the pad follows the, with the wear and the piston keeps pushing the pad out, out, out. In, in fact, uh, you can go so far that that the material on the brake disc pad is gone and be metal to metal. And if that's the case, then the piston is out probably 85% uh, of its travel. So obviously, you, you, what do you do? Well, you put new brakes on. Well, you don't put new calipers. So what, what you do is you push the piston back into the caliper. Well, remember, that fluid that pushed out the piston is in that same bore. So when you push the piston back, that pushes that brake fluid back up into the master cylinder. If the master cylinder had been topped off, which most of us top off master cylinders uh, when, when the car comes in for service, you know, 10,000, 15,000, 30, 40, 50, it's by 60,000 miles, you've got enough wear on the front pads that uh, most of or maybe 60% of the fluid reservoir uh, has been pushed into the into the piston and topped off. So when you push the piston back to its original position, back to home base, where does all that fluid go? I'll tell you, it goes right back into the master cylinder. Well, wait a minute, the master cylinder's already full. So where does it go then? Well, with the top on a master cylinder, there's a bleed hole for air because the reservoir has to have air to allow to get into the master cylinder reservoir because if you pump fluid out of the reservoir to step on the brake, when you step on the brakes, if it was a sealed unit, the fluid wouldn't go out because it would be a vacuum pulling the, the fluid back. So there is a vent hole. And that's why, if you've ever noticed, when you take the cap off of a master cylinder, whether it's a screw on cap or the use a bailing to hold up the, or a plastic, whatever, you'll see there's a rubber bellows that, that actually is kind of sagging and laying on top of the of the brake fluid it, it that is a that's there for a purpose it's made to do that designed to do that to to relax and sag down and lay on top of the of the brake fluid so that there's a barrier between the brake fluid and the atmosphere because brake fluid is hygroscopic it will absorb moisture and that's what really why you have to flush the fluid every two years you didn't, bet you didn't know that but that's that's why so I mean, that's not something that the service dreamed up for a service. It's, it's something that the manufacturers found that were, were caused a lot of issues with hardware. So the bottom line, when you push the piston back 
to replace the brake pads and you've got the top on the master cylinder, it will and cause that fluid to spray uh, under the hood because it's going to come out somewhere, right? Well, that happened to me years ago. And I opened the hood, obviously, when I finished to check the fluid. And when I opened the hood, the fluid that had sprayed onto the underside of the hood ran down the back of it and wicked off the back and dripped off the back onto the fender of the car. Needless to say, I never did that again. That was the one time, and it was just, it hurt me to the bone. We'll take a call from Steve. Uh, Steve, welcome to Bobby Likas Car Clinic. Thank you for holding. You're on the air. Hi, Bobby. Good morning. Uh, I've got a 1994 Jeep Wrangler that was parked for a year. Uh, took it out the other day. Uh, it's a survivor. Uh, it looks brand new. Wow. And I, I took it out. The, yeah. Uh, I, it has really, I, in fact, I had to change the tires because they aged out. So I put, I put a new, new set of tires on them. Anyway, I think I've got a flat spotting problem. Um, but I'm not really sure. I, I drove it about 20 miles an hour through the neighborhood. Uh, to get it out onto the highway. And then when I got about 45 miles an hour, I noticed there was shaking going on. Um, and I, I can't, uh, it, it seems to uh, go away when you take it up a little bit faster, but at the slower speeds, I feel some shaking. And it's more mostly in my seat where I feel it, not so much in the steering wheel. So I, if, it's a, if it's a flat problem, is there a solution? Because on the internet, there's all kinds of crazy stuff. And, I, you know, I don't know. What, I don't know what to do with that. Well, the bottom line, uh, Steve, when a, when a tire and and my car has that same issue, uh, a flat spot. It's the particular kind of tires, and so the. In fact, there are something like uh, six pages uh, of uh, ta technical service bulletins from uh, Jaguar Land Rover that addresses the shimmy of the front suspension or the vibration of the car. And without exception, for the tech, now these are rules made by the OEM, the, the maker of the car, for their franchise dealers, technicians to follow before they ever replace any parts. Because that's a common, it's a common problem. And of all of the, the, the pros and cons of my car that, that I really like, and, you know, I had this car made, it's a special everything. Uh, I've had issues with the brake caliper and the water pump. Water pump was redesigned, so that took care of that. I knew that there would be a problem. There was a problem there somewhere, uh, and also there's a, a, uh, some shimmy in the front wheels, and the tires will flat spot. But getting back to the root of your question, Jag says to the technician, you must drive this car 20 miles on the interstate or on, uh, at normal highway driving before you ever start to diagnose this automobile. So just for you to know, it takes. Uh, from that, I put a lot of credence in that. From that, it takes 20 miles to round out a tire that has been flat spotted and just because a tire flat spot Steve doesn't mean that the tires bad uh, although for me I, I really don't like that because I live uh, just under four miles from the studio so every time I come to work I, I'm, I have to deal with that ironically the weather has a lot to do with whether the tires flat spot or not whether it's real cold or it's not now this morning and well in the last month I haven't really noticed any flat spotting although I do have some brake vibration but I, I say to you two things will balance but you don't balance a tire that's flat spotted why because the rubber is not round and it's not where it will be for the for the most part so here's what I would do if I were you I would I would set an appointment uh, with a shop and I would go to the shop and say okay I'll be back in 30 minutes and I want you to balance my tires but when I come back I'd like to be able to immediately lift the car off the ground and, and get it in the air. And, and it's okay if they can't work on it immediately, but they need to get it off the ground. And you go drive the Jeep 20 minutes or 20 miles rather, well that would take you half an hour, and then you come back and then they'll raise the vehicle off the ground to get the weight off the tires. That will produce the roundest tire that, uh, 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 you know, depending on the tire quality, but that's as, as, as much as you can do and it can be done before they balance the tire. Okay. And then, then have them balance the tire and, th and that should take care of it. Now, uh, I, I will say this, one thing about Jeeps, you know there's a horizontal shock on the steering, a steering dampener. Are you familiar with that? Yeah, I actually changed that out. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. 
Jeep uh, has 60,000 miles, and I changed it about, oh, about a year ago. But, yeah. Uh, it was, it, I was getting a lot of shimmy, and I realized that's yeah. what it was. Yeah, yeah. man, that, that's a common, that's a common, you know, it's really something, uh, now I've had this happen uh, on older cars, where you, it, once it starts shaking, it's like, uh, 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 that's like holding them to <laughs> yeah. a, an elephant, you know, a bull. Anyway, yeah. uh, so so that's what I would do. I'd, and then last but not least, if the tires, and, and you may have a problem finding a shop that could still do this, but I used to do this years ago to get the, the best best balance possible. You take a brand new set of tires, you go put 20 miles on them, you come back, uh, you blow them up to 50 pounds, uh, and then let them back down to the running, and then you take uh, put them on a machine or leave them on the car, and you cut the tire itself using a truer truing machine and that's old technology but when you take a perfectly good tire and you'll see somebody well well you're gonna you're gonna shave rubber off a of per perfectly well yeah because you make it absolutely round now you, you've got to put the 20 miles in of course to, to get the the, the the begin with and then you you shave it and it makes it round then you balance it and i did that specifically oh i don't know at least a hundred times well maybe maybe well, just under 100 times, as I remember, in my career early on, uh, and I will tell you, uh, you could drive a vehicle, and it had that, oh, it had that s smooth. It had, it never balked. It reminded me of a, a 911 Porsche, which I have, that is so smooth, and the brakes, you know, are. I mean, those cars don't give problems with, uh, with brake vibration or wheel vibration because they're made to run, you know, 130 miles an hour on the Autobahn all day long. Anyway. Yeah. Hey, thanks for your call. Well, thank you, sir. Have a good day. You as well. We'll go from uh, uh, Florida to Kansas and take a call from Robert. Robert, good morning. Welcome to Bobby Likas Car Clinic. Good morning, Bobby. I enjoy your show. Thank you. Hey, I've got a 08 Ford with a 5.4 <clears throat> in it. Okay. And uh, I don't know what it is, but uh, and I can't simulate it or make it happen and just happens on its own but i will have a you would swear an air conditioner hose line blew out a sounds like a pressure relief valve is going off <clears throat> under the hood on the driver's side of the engine and uh, when it's happening i can't get my my hood open fast enough ju you know jump out of the cab and run around there and, I, and it'll stop before i can get yeah, find out what it is. I was just wondering if all your years you'd come across anything like that. Well, I have an idea. Uh, there's a hard break we got. So, so Robert, you stay right there. And, folks, you don't touch your dial. I'll be back, and we'll talk about this hissing noise from Robert's AC. We recently sat down with Kate Searlick, Global Product Management Lead with Johnson Controls. Kate talked about the advantages of AGM batteries, noting they outperform traditional flooded batteries when partially charged. A key benefit if your normal driving consists of shorter trips. Let's hear from Kate. Today's charging systems are not negatively affected by installing an AGM battery, and no modifications are needed for the alternator or the charging system. In fact, an AGM battery actually performs better when partially charged than a standard flooded battery. This means if you're not driving long enough distances to fully charge the battery, an AGM battery more efficiently performs and not consume additional power from the alternator. We were able to validate this in fleet testing we conducted in Las Vegas, where we witnessed AGM batteries providing up to twice the service life of a standard flooded battery. AGM batteries help meet the electrical demands put on today's vehicles, and Johnson Controls is the world's largest producer of automotive AGM batteries. Learn more at autobatteries.com. You're listening to Bobby Likas Car Clinic. Waking up can be a chore. But morning's knocking on my front door. Know just what I'll do. Put on a pot of Folgers brew. Mountain grown aroma hits the spot. Helps me give all that I've got an opportunity to start out smiling and happy. The best part of waking up is Folgers in your cup. I'm privileged.
privilege to be involved with Capstone Adaptive Learning, formerly known as United Cerebral Palsy, for over 25 years. Since 1953, Capstone has provided quality care programs for persons with developmental disabilities like autism, cerebral palsy, Down syndrome, and intellectual disabilities. Dr. Sherry White with her team are dedicated to Capstone's clients, and 100% of your contributions stay local to serve those in this community. Go to capstoneadaptivelearning.org to see the difference Capstone makes. Technology moves at the speed of innovation, and today, that's lightning fast. So when you get your hands on the latest tech, don't forget to do the right thing with your old devices. Recycle them. The Consumer Technology Association and its members are making recycling your old tech device as easy as purchasing new ones. Just go to greenergadgets.org, type in your zip code, and you'll instantly find the responsible recycling location closest to your home. You'll also find lots of tips to simplify your recycling, like asking the store where you buy your new TV if they'll haul away your old one. Television sets, video game consoles, smartphones, tablets, they're all recyclable. Don't let them clog up your local landfill. Just visit greenergadgets.org. You're sharp enough to get the latest tech tools into your home. Now be responsible enough to get your old devices to the recycler. That's greenergadgets.org. And now back to Bobby Lycus Car Clinic and your host, Bobby Lycus. And welcome back to this hour of Bobby Lycus Car Clinic. Actually, this segment, uh, we're, it's about 41 after the hour. We're talking to Robert in Kansas, who has a, an 08 Ford with a hissing noise. Uh, now, Robert, you, you, you lean toward the air conditioning noise. Uh, so let me ask a question. Does this noise only occur when the AC is running? No, it doesn't, Bobby. I, I thought that's what it was when it first happened. Uh, even packed, though, I was running the heater. But anyway, uh, it happened to me the other day with the AC off, and, and my AC is working fine. Right, right. So I don't, for now, I don't think it is the AC. So but, so at, under what circumstances? I mean, if you're in traffic downtown or if you're on the road or, or help me to understand. Uh, mainly it happens when I, well, I've only, I can't, I probably couldn't hear it when I was running down the road. Right. But when I just stop and get out and open up a gate or something and it'll just go off. And it's like and a like a pressure valve releasing. like that? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, I mean, and it's pretty loud. I mean, gosh, when you first hear it you sort of A C line tore off the compressor or something. Wow. That's really strange. But, uh, I, don't, I, can't, I can't think of anything that, that uh, yes, or, you know, it doesn't, uh, you know, if it had an air ride, of course it doesn't. But if it were an air ride car, then, yeah, I, I could see where it would have a, uh, it could build up pressure. Uh, the only thing that I could see, of course, we're assuming that it's pressure, but w what if it's not pressure? What if it's a, like a vacuum uh, check valve for the brake booster? Do you have any loss of power brakes ever? Well, I haven't noticed that. Now, I did notice. I thought maybe they got a little softer, but the brakes are, I, I'm needing to change the brakes. Well, that wouldn't affect that, but here's what I want you to do, just just for grins and just to try to diagnose it yourself. Uh, let, let's say that you got out to open the gate and, and you heard the noise. This is when the engine is left running, is this correct? Yes, it only happens when it's running. And it'll quit on its own. You, you don't have to do a thing. Well, I was I was gonna say, gosh, if you could, if you, well, let me ask the question: Have you ever just stopped and uh, been talking in the car, in the truck, or something, or maybe checking a, a, a text when you, when you stopped and heard the noise, and then get, try to get out and find it, or no? No, what I'm saying yeah. is this: what I, what I'm thinking is, if you had a brake booster that or a brake booster hose or a check valve that was bad. Uh, of course, with the engine running, you, you would never you would never hear that. And if it were if it were bad enough that it would it, it would occasionally make a noise, you would lose the brake power assist. And you could tell because the brake would get the pedal would get harder, not softer. It would get harder because okay. you lose the you lose the vacuum assist. So that the yeah. booster assist. So that's really a strange one. I I I, I can't say. It, it's very interesting. Is that 
is that booster? I mean, I, I was thinking maybe it had something to do with the, the smog equipment on it, but does that booster, does it build up pretty good pressure just going down the road? Uh, the, the booster uses vacuum, uh, so it, it, you know, it depends on the size of the booster. Usually they're about uh, 10 to 11 inches in diameter. Uh, and there are two different kinds of power brake. One is the hydro boost, which uses power steering fluid, uh, which is what the old GM came out with that was on commercial vehicles first, and, and then Ford adapted it later on. And now I'm not sure which cars use it. A lot of cars are going, of course, to, to electric steering, uh, which is really an interesting uh, case, Robert. But uh, I, I say interesting because you can take a Lexus and put it in garage mode uh, of course, the car has to be stopped, and in the garage mode, it won't it won't move down the, the highway in the garage mode. But you can get this spin the steering wheel infinitely. There is no connection wow. between the steering wheel and the car in the garage mode. So you electronically use a scan tool, disconnect the steering wheel, not physically, because it is physically disconnected, but it's electronically physically disconnected, and just spin the steering wheel, and. Uh, Anyway, that, that's really interesting. I, I saw that, and my master ASE technician, Johnny Barr, says, you got to come see this. And, and I, I couldn't believe that any car, because that tells me that, that you have to have voltage to disengage the steering, because uh, otherwise, if you had to have voltage to engage the steering, then if you lost your battery, you lose your steering. So it has to, be, it has to default to mechanical. But anyway, getting back to, to your, your vehicle, uh, if it does have the vacuum and you can open the hood and look at the back booster at the, and master cylinder, you'll see there's a big booster there. Uh, the size of that booster uses engine vacuum, and then that vacuum, of course, is a negative pressure. So when you st step on the brake pedal, which pushes a push rod, then you, you have a booster that's taking a signal from you and magnifying that and forcing the piston to depress inside the master cylinder. So it's just like power steering. There's no such thing as power steering or power brakes. It's power assist, which means that it will not work on its own. It has to have input from the driver. And in the steering, you, th there's a, a, a twist, a torsion bar that you twist that senses the pressure on the steering turning, and then it will uh, deflect a piston that that, that causes pressure to go into a port and go to the left side or right side. In a brake, when you step on the brake pedal, uh, you, you, there's a, a pin that hooks to the brake pedal, uh, you know, a rod, and this rod pushes on a, a, a valve in the brake booster, and, the, on, and that brake booster, you know, it gets that sucked up. It, it gets uh, uh, it, atmospheric pressure, and that's how you uh, step on the brakes. I said all that to say this, if you've got a mast, a brake booster, check valve, or hose that's at fault, when you turn the vehicle off, because all cars must have brakes, at least five pumps with the engine disabled. I mean that's the rule, and that's a, a that's an old rule, and and it's been there for years. So that if you lose your engine, you still have power assist brakes to stop the car. Now. That's not that's not true for the steering because you lose the engine or you lose a belt off the off the bar steering, you, it, it steers like a truck. But at least you can stop steer it. But you've got to have the power brakes to stop a car because uh, it, it literally you wouldn't have enough leg power to to bring that car to a halt in an emergency situation. So uh, for for that end, in fact, so what that means is, and you can test this, Robert. Uh, it, it, do this a couple of times over the next week or two. Uh, when you turn the vehicle off, you go ahead and pull the key out, then depress the brake, and you'll see it goes down like normal, and, and let it all the way up. Do that, and you'll see that after the third, fourth, or fifth depression, all of a sudden, you don't have any brakes anymore. That it, It's like rock. It, it, it's hard uh, because you've used up all the reserve uh, vacuum that's in the reservoir. Now, I said all that to say this, which is it's the long way around, but I, I'm trying to, to, to help you understand physically how it's made. So if you took uh, any automobile that has a brake booster, turn the key off w under the hood, and pull the hose out of the booster that runs from the engine that supplies the vacuum to the booster, it would go 
because you are allowing the vacuum reservoir inside the brake booster to escape and atmosphere rushes in and in fact to that end a lot of a lot of folks uh, and think about this folks and, and Robert I know you've thought about this history historically when you take the gas cap off a car go you say oh that's a vacuum in my tank well not it's pressure because uh, fuel tanks don't create vacuum if they did uh, it would uh, collapse the, the uh, fuel tank I've actually had a, a diesel Mercedes to to have a venting problem and collapse its fuel tank and that's the strangest thing that I've ever seen is a all steel fuel tank located behind the the rear seat in a Mercedes it was a diesel and what had happened is dirt daubers had uh, made a nest in the tube that sticks out the bottom which is a vent tube for the diesel tank and this was in a in the uh, oh it was a 75 or 80 model automobile and uh, so the actually the car came in because the car would run 30 miles and then quit well every time it came in you turn the car off they, they all that uh, venting would because that dirt dauber wasn't a complete seal it would let atmosphere in so the car would run fine so we, we looked at that car I don't know I don't know how many times I'm, it's been a long time but I'll never forget that either because it was one of those gotchas and and uh, you know like Robert you taking your car into a dealer or to a service shop doing something and then it, it, it runs perfect for the shop right I mean that's just the way cars are it happens and that's what this was and so we ultimately uh, fine-tuned the diesel we did a hundred thousand mile service on the diesel pump which is Mercedes call for uh, we, we put new seals and new filters and we tuned it as well as you could and it it got better and better and better and the man said well now I'm having to drive 35 miles and before it and then finally it ran until it quit and that's when he brought it in and sure enough the tank had collapsed on it and we didn't we didn't know there's no way for anybody to know it was the uh, it was the vacuum anyway uh, interesting yeah. scenario huh yeah yeah I was gonna say there is no residue or anything uh, to show I mean I thought maybe I could trace the leak down but there's no oil oily residue or nothing right well uh, it's possible and the check engine light never comes on as well right no no okay. no yeah, check engine. Yeah. well it's possible it could be a, I, was, I was gonna say it's possible to evap but I, I don't think it's a evaporative emission because if, if it were the check engine light would come on so that's what I would do I would check the just for grins and you don't have to get out uh, under the car uh, under the hood to do this when every time you turn the car off and the car's at rest and the keys out then st step on the brake pedal and then if you can ever catch it you know doing this and you're in the car go turn it off immediately and and pull the key out and then depress the brake pedal now you need to depress the brake pedal several times over the next week or so so you can become uh, educated and accustomed to how it feels you now you turn the key off and you step it on it once twice third after the fourth time you notice oh well I'm losing my brakes that's normal so now that you know what's normal the next time you hear the noise turn the key off immediately and then wait and then step on the brake pedal and if the brake pedal <laughs> is like it was four pumps historically you'll know it is in the brake booster side you got it All right yeah yeah that's that's what I would do okay. you know uh, at least that's the first step which is always the, yeah. the biggest step okay my friend thanks for your call in Kansas how's the weather in Kansas this morning well, it's uh, 68 degrees this morning, so oh, it's really nice. That's great. Well, have a great day. Thanks for your call, Robert. Thank you. So, so folks, uh, a very interesting uh, scenario. Number triple eight car clinic. If you'd like to give me a call, and uh, Hannah will take your call to put you in the queue. That's triple eight two two seven twenty five forty six. So, uh, I want to share with you something cool from one of our partners. And this is the Car Care Council. And it's a nonprofit organization, uh, and as I've said many times on Bobby Likas Car Clinic here, it's a great website to go to for videos, and you put your VIN number, and, and you'll automatically be sent uh, reminders when your car is due for service. But, but this is really cool, and this is where that consumers, which that would be you and me, uh, you and I, we, we, we pick top vocalists for road trip prep listening. What does that mean? Well, it means you got the radio on. You listen to the 
your singer of choice while you're looking at your car. Now, I mean, cars and music have always gone together, so it only ma it makes sense that when you're prepping your car for a road trip, you would listen to some tunes. So according to, get this, a nationwide survey of more than 25,000 vehicle owners, that, and this survey was conducted on behalf of the Car Care Council, Bruce Springsteen and Keith Urban were the preferred choice to listen to when getting ready to hit the road. Now, and that is really, I think, way cool. And the survey was conducted by uh, IMR Inc., which is an automotive market research company. Uh, and they, as I said, they polled more than 25,000 consumers. So what was the age? 18 to 65. And that was throughout the country. So they were asked to choose which recording artist that they were listen, listening to while they were prepping their car. So he, here's the rundown. And uh, Jimmy Buffett got in there, too, I, I, which is, you know, that's really cool because he is a really cool guy. So, but number one was Bruce, uh, Bruce Springsteen, 24%. Keith Urban, 16.4. Bruno Mars, 16.1. Jimmy Buffett, 15.7. So that's the, the top four. And then the were Lady Gaga, Taylor Swift, and Beyonce. And uh, that's down uh, in the, the four, five, six, and seven, six, seven, and five, six, and seven. So a simple driveway inspection of your vehicle while you're listening to your favorite music can really uh, help prevent the inconvenience of a roadside breakdown, uh, or in the words of another Springsteen song, a wreck on the highway. And this is according to Rich White, who is the director of the Car Care Council. In just 10 minutes, you can make sure your car is ready to go. So let me give you a couple things to check, okay? You, you check all fluids. You make sure that the fluids are uh, power steering, brake, and transmission, and that's ready for the road. Check all the hoses and belts. Uh, look for cracked hoses and cracked belts, and squeeze the upper radiator hose. If it feels real soft or mushy, that's a problem. If it feels uh, firm, that's fine, but if it feels firm, but there's a, a breaking brittle on the inside when you kind of squeeze it, that means the electrolysis, and that means the hose uh, has damaged, and so was the interior of the cooling system. Check the tires and pressure, and then as we started this, today's uh, this hour of Bobby Likas Car Clinic, check the wipers, so that the wipers uh, reservoir is is filled with the right kind of cleaner, uh, and also check the lights because you want to be seen and you want to see. That's a safety item. Thanks to our partners, the Car Care Council. For more information, go to carcare.org. Another great hour of Bobby Likas coming up, 888-227-2546. Bobby Likas. Like us, you'll love us. This is Bobby Likas Car Clinic. Bobby Likas Car Clinic is a copyrighted presentation of Car Clinic Productions Incorporated and may not be reproduced or rebroadcast without the express written approval of Car Clinic Productions Incorporated. Insurance 101, courtesy of Grundy Insurance. Uninsured motorist liability and underinsured motorist liability are both important aspects of vehicle insurance as they protect you against an at-fault driver who is not insured or who doesn't have enough insurance. Important to note, the definition of who's insured refers to people, not vehicles listed on a particular policy. So the uninsured or underinsured limits you select for your policy for your everyday cars will transfer over to you when driving your collector car. Find out more at Grundy.com. Berryman's B12 Chem Tool features HEST, or High Energy Solvent Technology. Using a combination of stronger solvents, HEST technology helps maximize one tank cleanup of intake valves, fuel injectors, and combustion chambers. For example, Frederick L. was experiencing a stalling problem on his 88 Mazda B2200. The vehicle was bogging down under acceleration. He tried Berryman B12 Chem Tool on a whim and noticed a huge difference, both with performance and fuel economy. Learn more about Berryman B12 Chem Tool at BerrymanProducts.com. You're listening to Bobby Likas Car Clinic. If you're familiar with the Kulsifid section of the newspaper, you probably understand this message quite well. You see, in the Kulsifid section, everything gets abrupted. Consonants, vowels, prepositional phrases, the very building blocks of our language are thrown right out the window. And that makes it difficult when you're trying to sell your car. You've got a limited amount of space to work with, and by the time you abrivet the description of your car down to a couple of fragmented sentences, it sounds less like a car and more like a blup sedan with a new condition lumuls. 
No wonder more people are selling their cars through eBay Motors. They can post unlimited text and photo descriptions, and with a nationwide marketplace, they're likely to sell it for more. Plus, book parties can be covered by eBay's vehicle protection program. Buyers are happy, sellers are happy, and no one's abbreviating. eBay Motors, a better way to sell your curb. Bobby Lycus Car Clinic begins at six minutes after the hour. Bobby Lycus Car Clinic begins at six minutes after the hour. Bobby Lycus Car Clinic begins at six minutes after the hour. Bobby Lycus Car Clinic begins at six minutes after the hour. Bobby Lycus Car Clinic begins at six minutes after the hour. Countdown to three minute mark. Five. Four, three, two, one, mark. Bobby Lycus Car Clinic begins at six minutes after the hour. Bobby Lycus Car Clinic begins at six minutes after the hour.
Bobby Lyka's car clinic begins at six minutes after the hour. Countdown to one minute mark. Five, four, three, two, one, mark. Countdown to 30 second mark. Five, four, three, two, one, mark. Countdown to 10 second mark. Five, four, three, two, one, mark. Welcome to Bobby Lycus Car Clinic. If you have a car question for Bobby, call now at 1-800-264-5454, toll free from anywhere in America. And now, here's your host, Bobby Lycus. And good morning, folks. Welcome to this hour of Bobby Lycus Car Clinic. A great program today. This is our second hour. Just remind yourself, or just remember that every Saturday from 10 till noon Eastern Time, we come to you on your local AM and or FM stations in many of our uh, affiliates, uh, we are broadcasting simultaneously uh, on both the AM and the FM stations, which is uh, common these days, uh, more so than it was uh, years ago. Uh, Bobby Likas Karkinick is brought to you in part by Motor Red, which is your first choice for vehicle thermostats, closure caps, and engine management systems. You can learn more about their products and the industry-leading application coverage at MotorRed.com. And just so you'll know, when you say closure caps, that's radiator caps and thermostats. And these days, uh, what Motor Red has done, I thought was so interesting, is they also offer now uh, sensors for your vehicle, the engine management sensors. And I believe that they got into that part of the business, number one, because the thermostats now are also electronic, a lot of them. And the newer cars, the newer technology, and what that does is helps your engine warm up more quickly and the quicker it can warm up the better the fuel mileage and the fewer and lower the emissions your calls at triple eight car clinic when i come back hannah will take them at triple eight two two seven twenty five forty six and i'll put you on the air don't go away time for another edition of cooling system q a brought to you by motor rad your first choice for vehicle thermostats and caps why is the thermostat so important cooling system regulates engine temperature and helps prevent overheating while it's comprised of several components the thermostat plays a critical role with efficient cooling system operation it must regulate coolant flow properly to maintain a specific engine operating temperature in addition to providing quick warm-up motor rad's new stainless steel thermal element ultra stat is unmatched for corrosion resistance its revolutionary reacts wax mixture provides quick reaction time. The Ultrastat also features bilinear valve technology which prevents thermal shock to cooling system components gradually increasing coolant flow versus instant maximum flow found in traditional thermostats. The Ultrastat precisely controls engine temperature to ensure the lowest emission standards, maximum fuel efficiency, and terrific interior cabin comfort. The Motorrad Ultrastat line is the perfect thermostat upgrade option with coverage for over 160 million vehicles on the road today. Motorrad, leading the way in coverage and service. We recently had an 09 Honda Pilot come into the shop with 169,000 miles on the odometer. The vehicle owner said the cabin was starting to smell like coolant and he was concerned. Upon closer inspection, we found a heater core leak. Choices were to keep the vehicle and make a repair, which at best is half a day's labor plus parts, or sell the vehicle and buy a different used car that could have its own set of problems. We presented a third option, K-Seal. You've heard me talk about K-Seal before. Well, I don't just talk about it, we actually use the product in our service shop. It's a pour-in solution designed to stop leaks and help prevent future leaks. Other sealers use sodium silicate, which has a tendency to clog the system. K-Seal features ceramic technology that's designed to repair the leak without clogging. 
Our customer went with K-Seal, and one month later, no more leak. Learn more about K-Seal at kseal.com. Don't just seal it, K-Seal it. You're listening to Bobby Lycus Car Clinic. Another lending success story from LendingTree.com. Car dealers like playing games. They play percentage points, they play markups, but I don't like playing with my money. So I got my auto loan through LendingTree.com. I filled out one simple form, a marketplace of banks and lenders competed over it, and I got four offers back within hours. After all, the car buying game is a lot easier to win when you're holding all the cards. LendingTree.com. When banks compete, you win. For additional information and state license disclosures, please visit our website located at LendingTree.com. Driving has a rhythm all its own. Don't wreck it with a text. Before you get behind the wheel, silence your phone. Or better yet, designate a texter. For more text-free driving tips, visit StopTextStopRex.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. And now, back to Bobby Lycus Car Clinic and your host, Bobby Lycus. And welcome to this hour of Bobby Lycus Car Clinic, brought to you by KCO, the one-step permanent multipurpose system for coolant leak repair, including head gaskets, engine blocks, water pumps, and radiators. You can learn more at kseal.com. We'll take a call from California, and I'll remind you folks, let's start our conversations earlier in the hour so that we don't get too rushed in the last part of the program. So let's welcome Frank from California. And in the meantime, uh, feel free to call. Hannah will take your call, put you in a queue at 888-227-2546. That's 888-CAR-CLINIC and I will put you on the air. Frank from California, you're first in, so you're first up. Welcome to Bobby Lycus Car Clinic. Oh, hi, Bobby. Thanks for taking my call. My pleasure. I have a kind of an unusual situation going on. I have a 2008 it's a Ford Ranger 4x4 okay. with the uh, 4.0 V6, mm -hmm. and it, it's low miles fairly. It's only got 66,000 on it for now. But it started doing, this is strange to say, but I know, I, like, you know when you go to start your car and you know how long to hold the key to the start position sure. before it starts? Sure. absolutely. Well, every, every once in a while, this will, it'll do, do, you know, it goes to start and I'll let go of the key like it's going to start like it always does at that time period. Right. But then it just goes, da -da -da, and then stops. And then it might do that two times in a row. But then I turn it off the way to a while, and then it, it starts up and runs fine, and it's great for another couple of months. Um, any ideas? Uh, I, I do. Uh, and the, the challenge, the, here's the challenge. It, it, it's going to be hard to prove or pinpoint what's wrong with it, what's causing it. And, and uh -huh. I, I've, got, I, I've got a specific procedure that I, I want you to try. Uh, but first, let me ask this question. When this happens... And then and you wait, you know, five seconds or so, and then you or not, uh, and you try it immediately again. Will it also not light off at its normal time? In other words, when it decides to do this, whatever for whatever reason, uh, does it take a couple of attempts to, to fire it off, or is it that first one? Of course, the first one, y your habit, and I, and I, we all do the same thing, so I know exactly what you're talking about. The habit is you turn the key, and, you, and, you, and before the engine lights off, you turn the key loose because you know that it's going to start, and it doesn't. When, when you have to double key it, let's say, double turn the key, uh, the second time, will it also not light off the second time, or does it always light off the second time? Uh, it, it'll do it uh, two, maybe two, sometimes three times. Okay. And then... Well, that's good. That, 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 that's good because that, 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 so here's what I want you to try. And you'll have to, you'll have to watch yourself because you'll automatically try it again. What, uh, the next time that this happens, I want you to stop. Mm -hmm. You can think of me and just stop. And then I want you to turn the key from off to run, but not to start, not to crank, but off to run. Gotcha. And I want you to say, this one's for Bobby. Oh, wait. This, I want you to do that three times, 
at no less than three times because when you go on any automobile, when you go from off to run, of course, you don't go to off and run and stop. You go to the crank, which is beyond the run, but you have to go through the run uh, uh, door, pathway to get to the crank. So when you go from off to run, the fuel pump will run about three quarters of a second. And that primes okay. the fuel system. So if you've got a fuel system uh, leak, whether it's a pressure regulator or a fuel pump and I, or an injector, and I suspect you've got one of the other, one of the other, uh, when, when you have that leakage, you, you don't have any residual pressure build up. So all cars have this prime the pump uh, arena. And that arena means when you put the key in, turn it to the run position, it for about three quarters of a second will prime the pump and then you go into the crank mode and, and the engine cranks. So if you can, it, when it acts up, if you can by cycling the key off to run three times and then go ahead and crank it and it lights off as normal, then you, of course that it'll be okay for a couple, three days and the next time it does it, do that again. If you can confirm by using this procedure that indeed you affect how it lights off, then you'll know that it is a, uh, or, or almost no, you never know until it's fixed, but you'll, you'll, uh, that will indicate that it has a low or a loss of pr fuel pressure. And that's then you could take it to a service shop and have them to run a pressure test. And a pressure test in, involves three different things. Uh, not only the operating pressure, it involves the residual pressure, which is when you like if you're washing your car in the driveway and you got a, a hose, you know, with a, a nozzle on it and you're finished with the car, you don't go over and disconnect the hose. You, you, you depress the nozzle first to let the pressure go away. Well, in your car, right. every, every time you put the car to bed at night, it's got all, or any time you turn the car off, all fuel injected cars have residual pressure. Because if they didn't, when you went to crank the engine again, whichever injector line didn't have the pressure, it had air, it, that cylinder wouldn't run. So your car would go, kuk, 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 it would misfire and it would, and it would wreak havoc on, on how it l lights off. So that's why manufacturers, and to that end, I actually learned something uh, several weeks ago when someone says, well, I've got an Audi and when I walk up to the car and push the key fob or open the driver's door, the fuel pump runs. Well, I thought that's the most ridiculous thing. To me, that's a fire hazard and, and I still think that it is. Uh, I remember that call. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll never forget it because I got an email from a gentleman uh, who was a master ASE. Well, he wasn't a master ASE tech. He was coming into the automotive field, so he had not had any hands-on experience professionally, but he did have some uh, ASE tests and certified. And he said, J just to let Bobby know that they're, they're uh, indeed uh, Audis do have and, and then I, I, I had a conversation with uh, my in-house guru, Johnny Bars. And so Johnny Bars says, well, yeah, Ford has that same uh, issue. And we actually had, uh, Frank, uh, a Ford in for an interior light problem. And it would blow a fuse. And it was the fuel pump causing the problem or a fuel pump feed. Because when you hit the key fob to unlock the door, the lights would come on in the car and it would blow the fuse. And, uh, and on occasion, it was erratic, but it was because the wow. fuel pump would. So, so uh, the bottom line is all cars that use uh, pressure, which is all cars, uh, they have electronic fuel injections, uh, use uh, a, a prep system or a prime system, and that's a pump. So try that on your Ranger, and then let me know what that, how that works for you, okay? Will do, Bobby. Thank you very much, and have a great day. Thank you. Have a great day in California. 888-227-2546. So this week, the auto show is going on in Washington. I love auto shows, and we could go to every one, you know, if, if we really wanted to travel that much. We, we have uh, the wherewithal, we have remote trailer assembly, and we have all of the same uh, studio equipment that is uh, uh, remote and, and uh, portable that we can go to shows, but it involves a lot of travel and a lot of travel time, and so uh, I just couldn't go to, to, to Washington for the auto show. But coming to us from the Washington Auto Show uh, is Stefan Knupfer, and he is the senior partner of McKinsey and Company. 
and I want you know I've got a couple of questions for him but it's all about the mobility uh, of today's society and uh, it's going to be really interesting I, 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 I've never met this gentleman but I have uh, several questions that I'm going to be asking him to find out really what's going on in the world of mobility and uh, he's a, a German fella and uh, Stefan and uh, I understand that he's a car guy like I so if you've heard me talking about EVs on this program and then of course we, we all talked about the self-driving cars and the autonomous cars which are really the self-driving is what we need not autonomous but self-driving cars I don't know what your opinion there is but we had one gent that that was really you remember him Jonathan yeah yeah he's never called back by the way but uh, we, he called about what three four months ago and he went on and on and on I mean he got into the where it was almost the fact that it was you know it was I was my right to say I liked him but it was his right to say he didn't like him and he thought it was a plot against humanity or, or something to that effect I, I don't remember now but uh, but hey you know we, we all have our little uh, lot in life so Stefan's going to be joined in fact uh, as we speak uh, Hannah is going to bring him up and, and ring him up and we're going to be talking to him and I want to get your calls in as well so 888-227-2546 Bobby Likas Car Clinic is brought to you in part by Optima Batteries get this featuring 99.99 percent pure lead Optima Batteries will last up to three times longer than traditional flooded batteries. Optima batteries, you can call them, and they are the ultimate power source. You can learn more at OptimaBatteries.com. And learn more from the Washington Auto Show when we come back with Stefan Knupfer, uh, a really neat guy and lots of great information about EVs and uh, mobility. Vehicles offer comforts and conveniences never imagined 20 years ago. Backup cameras, entertainment systems, start stop technology, the list goes on. These technologies help avoid accidents. But what happens after a crash? Growth in electronic vehicle content adds to the collision repair cost and complexity. Damage a side view mirror or paint a bumper, and you may change the trajectory of that sensor. Adaptive headlights are another example. They actually turn the corner with you as you're turning the corner. The price for these headlights can reach $2,000. Now, more than ever, it's important to follow automaker guidelines for vehicle repairs. Don't compromise vehicle safety. Car Star is North America's largest multi-shop operator of independently owned repair facilities. Car Star delivers consistently high-quality repairs and the industry's highest customer satisfaction ratings. At Car Star, they don't just repair cars, they repair your car. Learn more at CarStar.com. Folks, recently a 99 Chevrolet Blazer came into the shop. The owner was having problems with hesitation upon acceleration. He'd already changed out several parts, spark plugs, wires, ignition coil, mass airflow sensor, fuel filter, and the air filter element. He even changed the thermostat and coolant temperature sensor. Still had the same problem after putting a lot of money in this car, and he was frustrated. We dug a little deeper, cleaned the throttle body, and checked for trouble codes, no codes. So we recommended Berryman B12 Chem Tool. Carbon deposits and dirty fuel injector nozzles are a common problem with drivability in late model engines. We also recommended a higher quality gasoline. The customer noticed improvement on the first day, and only a few days and a few hundred miles later, the problem was completely gone. Berryman B12 Chem Tool features HEST, Berryman's exclusive high energy solvent technology. The result is a more complete combination of available chemical technologies. Drive to BerrymanProducts.com for more information. That's BerrymanProducts.com. You're listening to Bobby Lycus Car Clinic. Telephone TV. From Geico Auto Insurance. When calling Geico to switch your car insurance, you will not need acetaminophen, naproxen, indomethacin, ibuprofen, a cold compress, an on-call acupuncturist, or any other pain remedy. In 15 minutes, you could save 15% or more. If it were any more pain less, you could do it in your sleep, which is theoretically possible since we offer complete 24-hour service. Call 1-800-947-AUTO, 1-800-947-AUTO. GEICO Direct, the sensible alternative. When you purchase the latest TV, tablet, or smartphone, don't forget to do the right thing with your old ones. Recycle them. 
The Consumer Technology Association and its members are making recycling your old devices as easy as buying new ones. Just go to greenergadgets.org, type in your zip code, and you'll instantly find the recycling location closest to your home. You'll also find recycling tips, like asking the store where you buy your new TV if they'll haul away your old one. Don't let your old tech tools clog your local landfill. Just visit greenergadgets.org. And now, back to Bobby Likas Car Clinic and your host, Bobby Likas. And welcome back to Bobby Likas Car Clinic, a great program today. You can call with your car questions at 888, but first, let's talk about trends which are transforming mobility with far-reaching and widespread implications for countries and consumers all around the world. The age of autonomy, connectivity, electric, and sharing, that's A-C-E-S, is upon us and promises to transform the world of mobility to a greater degree than even Henry Ford and the Model T did more than 100 years ago, according to a global report from McKinsey and Company entitled Mobility's Second Great Inflection Point. With us on the Car Clinic Hotline today is Stefan Knupfer, Senior Partner of McKinsey and Company to talk about some of those trends. Stefan, welcome to Bobby Likas Car Clinic. I understand you're from the Washington Auto Show today, so we want to welcome you into the house. Thank you so much, Bobby. It is really exciting, exciting to be on the phone with you. Stefan, share with our Car Clinic listeners and viewers the trends that are transforming mobility's future. So I think there are four trends that we see, and we call them ACEs. And exactly as you said, they are autonomy, connectivity, electric, and sharing. And each of these trends are, um, each of the trends actually are by themselves very, very strong and actually exploding already. Now, what we see is primarily in the city environment that all of them come together. And if they come together, they are like a revolution and they change the industry in a way that we haven't seen the last 100 years. Wow. Well, what impact will this mobility transformation have on society? Uh, a significant one, but eventually, I believe, most important, a very positive one. And that's exactly why I'll, whenever I talk about it, I like to go to the end state of what we call the future of mobility. It will be significantly safer, easier, less expensive, more environmentally friendly for anybody to go from point A to point B. So we're not necessarily talking about car ownership. It's more like the desire of a customer to move from point A to B and very often, I think the first we will see probably on highway, and the second probably where we will see it is very quickly um, that we will see it in cities. I understand. We're talking with Stefan Knupfer, senior partner of McKinsey and Company. So, Stefan, I understand you're calling live from the Washington uh, Auto Show. What's going on at the D.C. Auto Show this week? So, obviously, we have wonderful cars here, but I think the most important thing is actually that we, that we right now are here in Washington is the connection between public and private investors. Because as I, as I mentioned, urban mobility is really, really exciting and is also necessary because our current system is 100 years old, but it generates a lot of congestion and pollution. Now, if we add more people, because more people will move into cities, if we add internet sales, which means more of the goods needs to deliver, the current system doesn't work anymore. With the new technologies, we have an opportunity to honestly have a much more seamless mobility, as we described. And being in Washington is the unique opportunity to connect public and private investors on this, because this is exactly what we need to make this happen. So, so Stefan, electric vehicles have been around for years, as we all know. But what will it take for EVs to become more mainstream for consumers and profitable for automotive companies? So mainstream for consumers, I do believe there is actually specific kind of areas where they are already very exciting. So I think what we have seen that Tesla owners obviously like their cars, they like the acceleration, they like the idea that they pretty much, if they can charge overnight, that they start with a full tank and something like this. So, so therefore, there is already a lot of excitement around it. The next thing is obviously the profitability if you see kind of how the battery costs are coming down, um, this is significant and much faster than anybody would have forecasted. By the way, this is exactly the same thing on any new kind of technology. If you think about wind or solar, also in battery, all the forecasts are always kind of 
a little bit more pessimistic than real, reality really is. And you see all the money that goes into it. And then last but not least, the excitement is also that you have to get actually smog and pollution out of cities because it's not healthy anymore. And a very simple way to do this is obviously that you change from combustion engines into electrical vehicles in cities. Well, that brings me to my last question, Stefan, and, and that's a hard question because uh, I'm a car guy. I mm -hmm. love cars. Share with our Car Connect listeners and viewers y your take on the possibility, and I say the possibility that perhaps I bought my last car that I'll drive and the next one will be driverless. That sort of makes me think of the Jetsons and brings to life uh, what we've seen on, on the screen. So w what's your take on all this? So, excellent question. And to be quite honest, I share something with you. I'm German. I'm a car fanatic. I have led our automotive practice at McKinsey for many years. So I love driving cars. I have actually old classic cars. I drive stick shift. Um, I like driving fast, which probably I'm not supposed to say. Um, so the fantastic thing is that I believe it's not going to be kind of a switch. We right now drive a car, and tomorrow we drive the autonomous vehicle. It's much more smooth because if you think about ADA system, uh, autonomous driving assistance systems, like your link control, like the distance control, like the brake assistance, all of this is in modern cars already, which makes us significantly safer. And we cannot trust exactly those autonomous vehicles very much. One example that I like to see is, think about I'm living actually in the suburbs, need to go to the cities. Um, I have a winding road actually from my house. I like driving fast my car. I will drive myself. The moment I get into the city and I try five miles an hour stop and go, mm. I hate doing this. Mm -hmm. So I give actually hand over to the car and the autonomous vehicle, and all of a sudden I become very productive. I can talk to my family, I can start working, which means it frees up time for things that I really want to do. So therefore, think about this, that you have many more options than what you have before, and it's not kind of limiting itself. I think that's an excellent overview, and it sort of brings to light uh, the the future, if you will, and it appears that the future is here. Stefan Knupfer, senior partner of McKinsey and Company. Stefan, thank you so much for your insight. Thank you so much for joining us on Bobby Likas Car Clinic today. Thank you so much, Bobby, for having me. Yeah, you know, folks, that makes a lot of sense what Stefan said. And uh, for me, uh, you know, I enjoy uh, speaking with uh, executives from other companies and and uh, normally they're automotive. This is McKinsey and Company, which is a, a financial institution. But uh, Stefan uh, made a, an excellent point there with driving on the winding roads. He's like, he liked to drive fast. I think that's an inherent in, in the German culture. Uh, and, and then you get into the city, and of course, you know, it's not only are you bored, but, but it's frustrating. So uh, that's a gr perfect example of how, and for me, and, and, and maybe for some of you out there, a perfect example of how we could and will be using and enjoying uh, a self-driving car. Let's go to Missouri, take a call from Tom, and I see that Rex from Kansas is in the queue, and I'll invite your call at 888-227-2546. Tom, thank you for holding. Welcome to Bobby Likas Car Clinic. Good morning, sir. Morning, sir. Uh, I have almost the exact same problem as Frank did with his vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, I drive an 08 Chevy Colorado, except mine is much more predictable. It only does it when I fill up my gas tank. Well, that would be probably a purge valve uh, issue. Uh, and, and in yours, uh, it, it, you're probably uh, flooding, the engine is being flooded, whereas his uh, same symptom, but, but his is not getting enough fuel because his is not connected with filling the tank. And when you fill the tank on, on uh, any car, uh, of course you put liquid into this, uh, in, into the tank, and, and the air has to go somewhere. And with that air, of course, there's a, a concentrated uh, amount of uh, misty gasoline fumes because you're, you're you know, spraying fuel into the, into the uh, tank itself. And if there's a purge valve issue, that means that when you first fire the engine, uh, it, it's going to get a double dose of, of fuel from the tank. In, in fact, it really shouldn't get any uh, fuel from the tank unless it's running down the road or idling or whenever the computer tells it to. So I suspect that you have a, a, a purge valve uh, issue. Does the check engine light come on, Tom? Uh, yeah, it actually says I have something. Uh, oh, okay. I took it to the mechanic, and, and uh, he said it's a... Uh, 
something to do with the uh, evap emission system. Yeah, right, evap system. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah, what we're talking and, about. Uh, he okay. said it wasn't worth trying to fix because it cost too much money to try to fix it. Well, you need to find another mechanic because let, let me let me share this with you. Uh, uh, number one, uh, he, he probably hasn't been successful in solving eval problems. Uh, we have and uh, and we have, uh, you know, I, I talk about Johnny quite often, uh, you know, and I have other technicians. I mean, you know, as we speak right now from the center of the automotive universe in our studio, uh, Tommy is also a, an ASC certified technician is out there uh, putting a clutch back together in, in an automobile or in a truck. So uh, this studio is located within a 15,000 square foot shop. I said all that. But with regard to EVAP, uh, we get a lot of evaporative emission problems and the check engine light, that's why I asked you if a light came on. Here's Tom, here's the problem with not repairing the vehicle with the check engine light. And this happened, this has happened not to me personally, but to a friends of mine. You're, you're at a company uh, party or you're at your home or maybe it's Thanksgiving and they got a lot of folks over and there's a bunch of cars there and, and uh, someone needs to go get more ice. So your car happens to be the, the one that's in the way. So you say, here's my key, take my car. Oh, and by the way, the check engine light's on. Don't worry about it. I mean, that's just natural, human nature. So they leave and all of a sudden, for some reason, y y your oil... Uh, pump quit or something major happens or or the radiator hose burst and and the, the the light some light comes on whether it's the alternator maybe the belt breaks and the and the alternator light comes on so whoever you loaned your car to said well Tom said the light was on no worry and then they destroy your engine and of course from then on you got a you got a, a you got a family disconnect with it you ruined my car but you told me to forget the light now i pose that because that's happened to friends of mine and i said this and that's the number one from a personal standpoint that's the reason you should fix the light from a professional standpoint the light is the only connection between you and a hundred different issues uh some of which could be detrimental to the longevity of the engine or transmission or safety of the passengers so for my nickel if you have a check engine light that comes on and stays on fix the problem if it comes on you had the gas cap loose it'll cycle itself over a couple of days but i will tell you that's what i'd recommend so find you my my, my final word find another technician fix it it's an evap okay. system okay can I, check, can I ask one more question? Uh, quickly, we do have a hard break coming up, but that's okay. I'll, okay. I'll hold you. Th What's your question? You know that that uh, trap door on your on your uh, filler cap or on your filler tank? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Got that little trap door. Well, yes, that sir. fell off into my into my tank sometime. That's okay. Would that have anything to do with it? No, nah, it won't. It won't okay. go anywhere. It, it's All right, I just yeah. It, that's just a little. Yeah, it, it, you can leave that if you ever have to pull the tank and pull the filler tube of course get it out and replace it but otherwise nah no worries hey folks i'll be back don't go away talking tunes no not the ones on your radio the ones that allow you to reprogram your vehicle's factory computer without even popping the hood the result is more power more torque and a better overall driving experience we recently sat down with Jim McGinn, Vice President of Marketing for Power Tech. Jim touched on some of the additional products Diablo Sport has to offer in addition to the Diablo Sport lineup of tuners Diablo Sport also offers jammer cold air intake systems and hooker black heart exhaust kits. These kits work in concert with the Predator 2, Intune i3, and Trinity 2 programmers to deliver increased fuel economy, mileage, and overall performance for your gas truck or SUV. Folks, Diablo Sports Performance products make the perfect holiday gift, and now is a perfect time to buy with their Holly Days Savings. How cool is that? You get up to 20% off SRP on their extensive lineup of premium performance products. Learn more at Diablosport.com. That's Diablosport.com. You're listening to Bobby Lycus Car Clinic. More than one million wild animals are killed each year illegally. Poaching is a major threat to our country's wildlife. I'm Tom Barry. I'm an actor with a desire to preserve living space for wildlife. The Humane Society Wildlife Land Trust does just that, works with private landowners to protect wildlife to preserve natural habitats. To learn more or to work with the Humane Society Wildlife Land Trust, call 800-729-SAVE. That's 800-729-SAVE or visit wildlifelandtrust.org. Thank you.
Did you know 26 million Americans have kidney disease and most don't know it? The day I was diagnosed, I didn't know what to do. I called the National Kidney Foundation, and the young lady who answered stayed on the phone with me and walked me through step by step. She, too, was surviving kidney disease. She showed me there could be life after kidney disease. Visit the National Kidney Foundation at kidney.org. Now you know. We're a land of cynics. We don't believe anything anymore. You know why? Because we've been told we've won a million dollars, that it's new and improved, that it slices and dices, that our favorite singer is still alive, that we'll be prosecuted if we cut off the tags, and of course that everything is back with a 100% money back guarantee. So when we hear the words customer service, we don't believe it. Travelocity isn't surprised if you're a little skeptical when they say they have excellent customer service and that there's actually a pleasant face behind this website, a living, breathing person with a supercharged computer full of answers, someone who's willing to help when you get lost, and most of all, someone that will actually pick up the phone when you call with a question or a concern. Customer service is just another example of how Travelocity puts you in control of travel. Chances are you'll never have to use it, but it's good to know it'll be there if you need it. Travelocity.com. Go virtually anywhere. And now back to Bobby Likas Car Clinic and your host, Bobby Likas. And welcome back to this segment of Bobby Likas Car Clinic, brought to you in part today by the Car Care Council. They're partners of ours, a nonprofit organization reminding you that April is National Car Care Month, and you can visit carcare.org for a number of fantastic tools, including tips and service schedules and videos and much more. So uh, at your convenience, check them out at carcare.org. You'll be happy that you did. Let's go to Kansas and take a call from Rex. Rex, welcome to Bobby Like Us Car Connect. Thanks for holding. Yeah, hi, Bobby. Hi, sir. Uh, I've got a... 2013 Dodge Ram pickup, and uh, we got struck by lightning. Came in through the um, radio antenna and has wiped out everything. Uh, is this something that is fixable or feasible to fix? Or we, we to, yes, yes, it is. Uh, no, uh, actually, the, the, I have good news for you uh, because uh, your your policy on that vehicle will pay to have that fixed, and so. Uh, we, we've actually repaired, oh, two, two or three of those. Uh, uh, one particularly comes to mind. Uh, as I remember, it was a Ford or, well, it's either a Ford or a Chevrolet, but it doesn't matter which one. Uh, it came in and uh, it, it had been struck by lightning and it, it had like three or four modules. The problem that we had with repairing of this vehicle, and it was very taxing. I mean, it took, you know, so we know what we're doing, right? Well, Rex, let me tell you something. When, when you've got five different modules or three different modules that uh, have a problem, you've got to replace one of those modules at the time, but so many parts of the vehicle are dependent on the other part, like, like and I'll make a, an easy example, if you had an oxygen sensor that was bad, say, say a Lexus, and they're, they're notorious for this. You have an oxygen sensor that was bad, then the check engine light would come on. Simultaneously, the STS light, the safety uh, restraint light, uh, or the, the suspension light would come on. And the, the reason that light would come on is not because there was a problem with that module, but that module sees the engine has a problem and for that module to do its work, whether it's an ABS or a traction control, it uses the engine controls to do its job. So uh, it, it would be like you and I being partners and all of a sudden, uh, and, and we're, we're gonna do this joint venture and I get sick one day and I'm not there and yet it's a two-party uh, two party physical thing that we're doing uh, then you have to say, hey, I, I can't do my job. Well, what do you mean you can't do your job, Rex? Well, because Bobby's out today. That's the way cars are with modules. And, and therein is a sort of a simple overview of what happens when you have uh, lightning because it's not discriminatory. I will tell you, lightning is the kiss of death. 
But the good news is your insurance should pay for that uh, to have it repaired and the vehicle will be as new once you replace modules, but the shop that has that you choose to repair that uh, has to be highly skilled and trained and have experience in electronics and reprogramming of vehicles. And so it's almost a dealership uh, issue, but, but it's an 03, and most dealers uh, shy away from cars that are 10 years old. Yeah, this is a 2013. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, 13. It's got a lot of computer type stuff in it. Well, then by all means, uh, fix it. Have it fixed. M make it right, and, and 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 you know it'll tell you. It's it's, it's it's cars are smart. I mean, your truck is is, is a vehicle of today's technology. It, it's a smart, and the, and their first things first. You know, like a PCM, a powertrain powertrain control or ECM, electronic control unit. That's the engine powertrain. Uh, does uh -huh. it not run? Not at all. Uh -uh. Yeah. The only thing that I can see alive in it is the dome light and the brake light. Well, it's possible that because so much voltage went in there that it had a main fuse that has blown. So uh, so you've not done anything with this vehicle since? No, the, the techs are talking with the insurance companies, and the techs want to total it, and the insurance companies are talking about fixing it, so but I don't know where to go. Well, let me share this with you because this may help you. Recently, I had a 2006 SC430 in here, and it had been uh, attacked by a family of squirrels. Uh -huh. I won't. And th the body control harness was destroyed. That feeds the ABS and all the body control functions. The engine control harness uh, had, uh, they'd actually chewed two and three and four inch sections of wires away. So you had you had the plug for like the ABS. You had the plug there, which is a three plug plastic connector. In fact, there are, there are two different connectors on the ABS unit. And both of those plugs were still there. And you could see it looked like somebody took a rat tail file and just filed off the wires and left the plug there. And uh, we repaired that car. And that car, that was almost a $10,000 repair and the insurance company never, never wavered. They paid it, and the car runs not only like it did before, but we did a lot of services and maintenance and timing belt and water pump and valve cover gaskets and what have you. So that car, thanks to, to, to Tommy, who is my uh, ASC certified technician, he did all the work on that car. I even helped him on, on some of the, the tedious where he had to have four hands instead of two uh, on the sure. wiring. Uh, that car is better than it was before it came in here and before uh, the squirrels ever got uh, under the hood. And it was it, it set out for uh, the, the owners uh, loaned it to their daughter because they had newer cars and it set out in the yard uh, for a while. But it, when we finished it, we detailed it. And I'll tell you what, it's, it's beautiful. It's just, you know, and it's an SC430 and those cars are really good cars. They quit making them in 2010. Okay. Okay. Well, I sure appreciate it. Well, I'm glad you called. Uh, and 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 again, y y it's not up to your technician to total the car. Uh, uh -huh. it it's up to the insurance company to total the car. And I think there's a 75% rule or whatever the value of the how right. many how many miles on the 13 car on uh, Dodge Ram? It's about 40,000. Well, you're gonna be hard pressed to total it because trucks are bringing a premium, you know, premium price. So uh -huh. uh, you know, d don't worry. It, but you might want to. You might want to get a second opinion from another shop uh, and call around and just ask the shop owner, hey, are, do you like this electronic work? Because you got to like it to be good yeah. at it. Okay? Okay. All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And, and folks, to that end, one of the questions that we ask when we're interviewing technicians th to come in, you know, the typical questions and, and the, also the ones that you can ask, you know, what's your age? I mean, there's so many things that poli being politically correct you can't ask. So the first thing, first thing I ask when somebody comes in, how old are you? <laughs> no, I don't do that. Well, I have, I have. I mean, you know, if somebody gets offended because I asked their age, uh, they can't work in an automotive sh shop. That's for sure. They can't work with other people that I, you know, and uh, you know, maybe a, 
Maybe I'll get some calls on that. Triple eight. Hey, that's fine. Triple eight two two seven twenty five forty six. What's your take? So, uh, I do ask uh, a technician uh, when I'm trying to see how that technician might fit into our culture. What do you like to do? Oh well, you know, what are you good at? And and you know, with regard to automotive, well, well, and this is a common. Well, I'm I, I I'm not a transmission. You know, well, that's okay because we don't overhaul transmissions anyway. We're not in that business. We replace transmissions. Uh, and there's a lot of good reasons for doing that. A seasoned shop that, uh, with a good reputation uh, is not a shop that's going to overhaul a transmission because there, there, there are lots of different terminologies uh, for uh, overhaul transmission, rebuild a transmission, remanufacture a transmission. In fact, years ago, California actually uh, the legislature uh, created uh, the verbiage for all of the above so that consumers would know the difference. For instance, rebuild a transmission means that you take a transmission out of your 100,000 mile or 200,000 mile vehicle and you re replace the burned out clutches and put all the new seals and maybe a drum or a band or whatever it needs to be and you put it back together using the same pump and the same good parts, right? The same good parts. Now, all these good parts have been working together for 150, 200,000 miles, so they're not as new. The surfaces are not as new, so that's why uh, you can get a better price, because you're not making it new, you're just replacing the parts that were broken. Whereas in a remanufactured transmission from national companies, you get longer warranty. Why? Because all of the surfaces that are against another surface have been remanufactured or remachined to factory tolerances. So you, you, for all intents and purposes, not only do you have the transmission as good as it was new, it's actually better than it was new, and here's why. And this is, this is, this is a fact. It, true for uh, remanufactured engines, too, depending on where you buy them. Uh, it, when you buy a remanufactured engine or transmission, not only is it updated r with new parts and, and late model automobile parts uh, for that tr specific via, uh, transmission, but also any of the issues that were built in when that transmission was engineered that they learned later on, they being the OEMs learned, that they, they, transmission came out, well, the first year we had problems with the third, third clutch or the rear reverse pack or, or the intermediate shaft or whatever. Like, I, and I can think of one word. That's the, you know, the uh, CVT transmissions, which are, I'm not a, a fan of, and I was for for years. But the and and Nissan particularly, if you've got an 06, 07, or 08 Nissan with a transmission problem, sell it. <laughs> okay, don't don't even get an estimate on it. That's because it is what it is, and they they've had problems. But getting back to the remanufactured, that's why you should really consider if the car is worthy and the rest of the car is in good shape, and let's say you lost a, an engine because of a radiator and you only tried to make that last exit, oh, it's only another half mile, and by the time you got there, you melted the engine down. So th that's when you should really consider a remanufactured engine because they'll have 100,000 mile uh, or 36 months or 100,000 mile warranty, and it'll be a n nationwide. So you don't have to be at home if you have a problem with this engine that's just replaced you don't have to be in, you know, come back to Bobby that, that put the transmission in. I mean, if you're in uh, San Obispo, California, you, 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 there's somebody there that, that uses the transmission with, within, you know, so many miles. So it's all good. Collector car insurance. Uh, I, I'm just outside my door of the studio is my Porsche that I really, really, I really love this car. I just enjoy it so much. And uh, I'll actually uh, let it get dusty, and then I'll take it out back and I'll wash it, and then I'll bring it back in and just enjoy it. And I, I used to keep it covered. I've quit covering it. Well, number one, I, I sent the cover out and had the cover washed, and it was too dirty to put back on. And then since then, I've, I've washed the car so I could put the cover back on, but I didn't because I do enjoy the car. But it's in a dirty environment, the shop, and a lot of cars going and coming in the shop, so there's always some emissions and and uh, and dust and what have you but it is a collector car 
and I want to share with you uh, information if you're concerned about your collector car or you want to know if what is a collector car well the types of cars that and and specifically here uh, speaking of Grundy insurance and they're partners of ours uh, and, and Jim Grundy was uh, my guest several weeks back uh, what a neat fellow he is uh, his father actually started uh, the, the business in in 1947 so the types of cars that are covered are usually vehicles that are 25 years old or older, uh, but they also insure uh, modern muscle cars and exotics of all years. And modified vehicles are included. And I didn't know that about Grundy, but I think that's really cool. Uh, but here's the, here's what separates Grundy from any other uh, classic car insurance company: how the value of the automobile is determined. Well, it's easy, and this is according to Grundy. You tell them what you believe the value should be. You send them photos of your car, and then their experts will, you know, meet and consult and consult and reach back to you on, and remember this, folks, agreed value. Once determined, that value will never be reduced, of course, unless you want it to be. And there's no usage restriction on the automobile. Grundy gives you unlimited miles, so you can pleasure drive or you can go to your uh, collector car activities and drive your collector car. Uh, Grundy coverage includes trip interruption, which reimburses you for hotel repair, towing, and get this, labor charges in the event of a breakdown. I, I find that so very uh, reassuring, and I find that uh, very deep and wide with regard to coverage and only a company that, that that could claim that would have to be a company that stands behind it so my choice for and yes I'm biased because I know the owner not personally but I know the company and I know what they stand for and this agreed value because I know what my car is worth or at least roughly what it's worth and the agreed value uh, is their specialty. They're the best. Grundy Insurance. Uh, for more, you can go to Grundy, G-R-U-N-D-Y, just like it sounds, Grundy.com. That's all the time we have for today's broadcast of Bobby Likas Car Clinic. Remember, every Saturday from 10 till noon Eastern Time, I'm right here to answer your car questions. Gas prices, national average, $2.69. Uh, mostly down for every region in the country. I'm Bobby Like Us. Until next week, like us, you'll love us. Take care of your car. See you then. This is Bobby Like Us Car Clinic. Bobby Like Us Car Clinic is a copyrighted presentation of Car Clinic Productions Incorporated and may not be reproduced or rebroadcast without the express written approval of Car Clinic Productions Incorporated. Your vehicle isn't stopping like it used to or make squealing noises when you brake. Shop the Spring Brake Deal Savings Event at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Right now, buy a set of Brake Best Select pads and a pair of rotors and get a $20 O'Reilly gift card by mail. Don't miss the Spring Brake Deals at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supply. See store for details. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. The Car Care Council reminds you that April is National Car Care Month. It's a perfect time for a thorough check of various vehicle maintenance items, brakes, battery, tires, cooling system, filters, headlights, the exhaust system. These are just a few things to consider. Visit carcare.org to find out how you can best keep your vehicle safe, dependable, and on the road longer. It's National Car Care Month. Are you car care aware? Learn more at carcare.org. That's carcare.org. You're listening to Bobby Lika's Car Clinic. Okay, Rice Outfitters, I'm Tina. How can I help you? I'd like to place an order. Great. Which item? The cotton roll neck sweater, large. Okay. Periwinkle loaded or caramel? The caramel, please. The what? I'd like it in caramel. Oh, the caramel? Yeah, that's what I said, Tina. Actually, you said caramel when it's pronounced caramel. Can't we just call it yellow? No. Everyone knows the best part of a Milky Way. They just don't know how to say it. After all, it's our caramel. It's caramel. Ugh, that makes a Milky Way great. You start my morning, you stir in my soul. You 